Hello, I'm Anthony Vaughn with the Product Marketing Team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the High End Timer NHET module and show you how to configure this module using Halcogen, TI's tool for generating initialization and peripheral driver code for Hercules MCUs. The NHET is a coprocessor integrated into many microcontrollers in the Hercules family. It is most commonly used for generating pulse width modulated outputs, performing input capture and compare, or for making frequency measurements. In addition to having its own execution processor, the NHET also contains its own program, control, and data RAM. Some people are intimidated with the notion of programming a coprocessor to perform timing functions. However, the tools available for the NHET make configuration and usage of the module simple. I'm going to show you how to use Halcogen to easily configure the NHET to generate a PWM output. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area of the website ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be directly installed from the software DVD that is included in all Hercules USB development stick and Hercules development kits. In this exercise, we are going to use Halcogen to generate a PWM with a period of one second and a duty cycle of 75%. We are going to use that PWM to toggle the NHET1 zero LED on the development board. For this exercise, we will need a Windows PC, either a TMS570 LS31 RM48 USB stick or Hercules development kit. We will also need Halcogen and CoComposer Studio. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Windows or Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New, Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all the generated code to be stored. The first step in the Halcogen is to create a new project. We choose File, New, Project. Then we select the device family and the device. Then we enter our project name. For this project, we will call it PWM. Then we can choose the location of our workspace, and we can choose which tools we're going to be using. For this project, we're going to be using Code Composer Studio, so we'll leave tools set to the Texas Instruments tools. Then we click OK, and Halcogen tells us that it's going to create our directory for us. Then we have a block diagram view of our chip, and we can go in and start configuring it for this project. The first step is to choose the Driver Enable tab. For this project, we're not going to use any drivers other than the HET1 driver. So we can uncheck all the drivers and then go in and just select the Enable HET1 driver. The next step is to go to the HET1 tab and then choose the PWM 0 through 7 sub tab. Inside here, we can go in and configure our PWMs. The first setting that we're going to change is the duty cycle to 75%. Then we're going to change the period to one second. Then we enable this PWM and choose to output it on pin zero. The next step is to go to the pin zero through seven sub tab and then enable the output direction control by clicking this checkbox right here. These are all the settings that we have to make in Halcogen for our project. The very last step is to generate our code. We choose File, Generate Code. This will create all of our C and header files that we need for this project. They are viewable on the right-hand side of the screen. We can open them and view them in Halcogen, but to edit and to compile, we need to open them in CoComposer Studio. Inside CoComposer, the first step is to create a new project. We choose File, New, CCS Project. Then we give it a project name. We need to call it PWM since that's what we called our project in Halcogen. The next step is to set up the device. The family type is ARM. The variant we need to choose, Cortex-R. And then we need to choose the exact device, which is TMS570LS3137. The last step in this window is to configure the connection type, which we're going to choose Texas Instruments XDS100 version 2 USB emulator, since that's the JTAG emulator that's included on our development board. Then we select Finished. Then we see our project appears in the Project Explorer window on the left. The next step is to expand that project out and delete the main.c file that CodeComposer automatically creates. Since we're going to be using code that create, was created by Halcogen, we do not need this file. 
The next step is to make some configuration changes with our project. To do this, we right click on the project and choose Properties. The first step that we're going to do is choose Include Options, and then we're going to add all of the header files that were created by Haukagen. We expand the project and select the Include directory and then click OK. Then we click OK. The next step is to go to the debug settings. In here we choose the TMS570 LS3137 flash settings and change the erase options to necessary sectors only for program load. Then click apply and OK. This will significantly increase the uh, speed at which the uh, flash is erased and reprogrammed. The next step is to expand the source view and open up the file named sys underscore main dot c. This file contains our main function. Then we need to insert some code into this section. The first thing that we need to do is insert some code in the user code begin zero section. And as long as we insert the code between these comments, later on we can import this project back into Haukagen, make changes to the driver, regenerate code, and Haukagen will not touch any of the code that we've entered into these comments. So the first thing we need to do is add our header files. For this project, we need to include the het.h header file. The next step is to enter code in our main function. That happens to be in the user code begin 3 section. Inside here, we need to enter a little bit of code that initializes our high-end timer with the het init function, and then we go into a while 1 or an endless loop. The very last section in the user code begin 4 is where we handle all of our interrupts and we enter the following code to handle the interrupts. That's all the code that we need to write for this project. The next step is to compile and program the flash memory of the microcontroller with this application. To do that we choose run and debug. Then it's going to ask us to save the changes to our sys underscore main.c file. We say OK. Then the project will compile and load into the flash memory of the MCU. So now that we have our application programmed into the microcontroller's flash memory, we can run it. And now we see that our PWM is present on the blinking white LED. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on TI.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can download software like Haukagen, NowFlash, and the High End Timer Integrated Development Environment. You can also order development kits through the TIE store from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer Support Forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs, in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted to this forum. The final web-based resource is the Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about Hercules MCUs. The Wikis contain useful information like development kit, board schematics, and training content. I hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.